Please be seated. Kia ora katoa and welcome to our guests from Zion Hill. It's lovely to have you with us again. And hello to everybody. Now I asked you to stand up for God and for each other. Because this is a service today where I'd love us to celebrate being part of this group today, bringing all of our strength into this space. It was to be a communion service, but as we know, Reverend Jin Sook is away and she had to adjust her travel plans because of some family commitments. And uh, she's going to be back on the 4th of February. Um, so this isn't a communion, except that it is a gathering of us as God's creation. And aren't we miracles? And here comes another one. Let's all look around. Here's another one. Here we are. She's going to think, what are they doing? Welcome. Hello, friends. And to people at home as well, remember that we remember you. And so we're just going to pause for a moment and think of those people we know who watch the videos and who aren't with us today and might have sent along a word to say they won't be here. We hold you in love as well. So let's just remember people for a moment. Very good. So what do we bring into church today? Here's a blank screen. What would you like to call out and say you bring into church today? Parents. Parents. <laughs> Literally, you bring your parents. It's really good you're there, Kay, because they would never find their way here otherwise. <laughs> I mean, as it is, Laurie seems to go to the wrong church many Sundays, and then he has to be fished out and brought over the road. So good you're here. Smiles. Smiles. Yes, yes, yes. Smiles. What else? From the week. What do you bring from the week? Maybe you've been smiling all week. Let's look at this photograph. There's a photograph of somebody having a birthday earlier in the week. So some people gathered in the hall here to celebrate a rather special birthday for Robin. Did you have fun, Robin? Yes, you did. You were very surprised. So it was a total surprise birthday party. And I have to tell you that an employee of the church was lying to Robin all the way down the corridor about not knowing it was her birthday. But it was in a good cause, wasn't it, Robin? It was. You had lots of fun. And that's what were you doing there? You were getting ready to blow out the candles on your cake, weren't you? Pauline was lighting the candles and you were going to blow them out. Anything else that you bring into church today, anybody? Well, I'm thinking about February and Waitangi Day. You don't have to read the small print. This is the 1835 Declaration of Independence. And it's quite interesting to think about the Declaration of Independence alongside the Treaty of Waitangi. And so if you don't know about the Declaration of Independence or have forgotten about it, look it up online. Just have a bit of a read and see what you think. It's quite an interesting document. It's not very long. And I'm thinking about the word treaty, and often in history when we talk about treaty, we talk about a surrender document. So there have been two sides, one side has lost, and there's a treaty that really is the recognition of the surrender. The treaty in New Zealand is a different kind of document. It's a partnership document. So I've been thinking a bit about treaties and history and the treaty here. And Birkenhead Pride, you don't have to read this print either. A reminder that Birkenhead Pride is coming along and lots of organisations around here are hosting Pride events. There is the programme on the notice boards in the foyer if you would like to have a look at some of the things that are coming up. And I'll continue to feature it in emails. Remember, we have two events. We have a community potluck afternoon tea meal kind of thing on Saturday the 10th of February at 3pm and on Friday the 9th at 1pm we have a joyful movement talk by my friend Ree. I've spoken with Ree this week and I'm able to tell you about Ree. So Ree, I mentioned that I think, I think, did I mention to you that Ree did ballet as a child? I think I did. So Ree was a girl who did ballet. And the Ree who is coming to speak to us is the same person who identifies as a man. 
And he has a really interesting life journey to share about discovering the joy of himself. Um, I learn a lot from Reed. I regard him as a really impressive person. He was a library colleague of mine as a female and a colleague of mine as a male. And he's a super, super person. So that's on Friday the 9th at 1pm. Who remembers that? Hands up. Some people do. So that's the flooring under the carpet in the office that I use. And the carpet has now been replaced. This is what they found when they lifted the carpet. And I said to David, it's a good thing I hadn't seen it because I was brought up on this kind of colour. Autumn tonings were our household colour. And I probably would have insisted that we keep it. So today you can have a look in the office and see the new carpeted space. And I've also unlocked Jim Sook's door, so you can have a look in her room as well and see the whole room has been carpeted. So if you want to just poke your nose in and have a look, please do so. And what were we doing a year ago? Yeah, and so we would probably all have contacts, friends, family members, associates who were disturbed last year and have continued to have their lives disrupted. Our Reverend Robin's son, had his place flooded, didn't he, in West Auckland. And so, you know, there will be all sorts of connections for us as we think of what we were doing one year ago. So maybe we bring some of that thinking into church today too. And here is the call to worship, and there is the most fantastic call to worship leader that you could ask for. Her name is Nan. So call to worship. Beliefs claiming we don't belong to one another. The objects denying the beauty of each person. Sources spreading toxic misinformation. Quiet. Quiet. Ways of thinking that limit possibilities of liberation. The desire, the desire to, to fulfill, fulfill our longings through consumerism. consumerism. Ways of being rooted in resignation and despair come yeah. out of us. The living Christ rids the world of the ways of domination. We, we celebrate, celebrate the lifting away of what, what does not serve us. us. We, we make room, room for the ways, ways of life. And so, God shines in you. How about you just take a moment to say that to somebody? God shines in you. Let's do that. So friends, we're going to pray and we're going to use a prayer that I've adapted from the Daily Word, which is a devotional I receive every day by email and uh, I've played around with the prayer a bit because I like the sentiments in it, so it's for us. And as we pray, I'll ask uh, Rachel, because she's always keen, to come and light the white candle. Thank you, Rachel. And then there's a prayer that follows that we will say together. And so friends, let's pray. Come up whenever you're ready, Rachel. We open our hearts to the activity and blessings of you, God, and pause in gratitude. In this moment, we don't think of the past or the future. We receive the moment for what it is. Time with God. Let us be grateful for this connection and the blessings that flow to us for all who support us and the circumstances of our life that nurture us or teach us. And so at this time, we receive our blessings anew. How amazing it is to be spiritual beings of potential. As we affirm our gifts and talents today, we accept the call to do good work to be a person others want to be around, and to act as a confident and caring presence in the world. And so we say these words together in prayer. Most compassionate life giver, may we honour and praise you. 
may we work with you to establish your new order of justice, peace and love. Give us what we need for growth and help us through forgiving others to accept forgiveness. Strengthen us in the time of testing that we may resist all evil. For the tenderness, strength and love are yours now and forever. Amen. And we sing. Praise with joy the world's creator. Methodist photos. Nan is famous in this church for her command of the catechism. <laughs> so when she turned up at that university, they said, Wow, we're on to a winner here. Oh, you're a good sport. Thank you, Nan. Thank you for telling us that. My heart swells as I think of all God has done. The brilliance of humanity, diverse and creative. The majesty of mountains offering an iron and diamonds, the towering trees of ancient forests, the delight of the ladybird and grasshopper, the power of water falling, falling, the justice of food for all, abundant crops in the fields and fish in the rivers, the faithful rising of the sun and falling of the rain. The promise of rain after drought, of crops after famine, the hope that God's wisdom will fill human minds and hearts, the promise of understanding the unending hope God has in us, 
never tiring of our wanderings, always calling us back, back to the covenant, back to wisdom, back to faith. My heart swells assured that God has not yet given up on this world. Beautifully. Together. We were together. Did you notice that? And Gary is going to bring us the gospel reading. Thank you, Gary. Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was, a, there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What do you have with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him, and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. People of faith, hear the scriptures speak to us today. Thank you, Gary. Great reading. Thank you. Some years ago I was preaching, actually at a Methodist rest home in Mount Eden. And I've told some of you this story, I think. They would bring people of different stages in their life into the service. There were people who would be lying in beds and would be wheeled in. Other people would um, spring into the room, you know, and sit at the front and were all alert and lively. So quite a, a range of people. And I was talking very, very briefly. The sermons were so short. You would love them. They were about five minutes. You know? and, uh, and so I, I was mid-flow about two and a half minutes. And this woman who was lying in her bed called out, You're a fool. You're a silly old fool, you are. You're a fool. So I thought, well, what would I do? So I kept going. Because I thought, well, it's only five minutes, you know, it stops it. So I kept going. And then at the end, the service was only about half an hour, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. At the end, I went around and spoke to everybody and shook people's hands, held their hands, and wished them a good week. And this woman grabbed me, same woman, grabbed me. She said, you're a miracle. <laughs> you're a miracle, you are. You're a miracle. <laughs> so as I walked away, she was right the door, first Paul time. said to me, you should have said to her, you're a right first time lady. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I often think of that. Well, even though his disciples call him teacher, it is unlikely that Jesus was formally trained as a rabbi. We can say that partly because the office of rabbi was not yet formalised in his day, but also because his method of teaching differs from the rabbinical style of scriptural interpretation based on ancient traditions and scholarly consensus. It wasn't Unusual for somebody to be invited to speak in a synagogue as Jesus was, it was pretty common. But in the story, he dramatically exceeds expectations, is indeed a miracle. Twice Jesus is described as speaking with authority. Exousia is the word, and it means the power of choice being able to act independently, to do as you please. So rather than interpreting scripture or quoting scholarship, relying on the knowledge of biblical tradition that rabbis would bring, Jesus tells his own stories and makes an impact through the power of whatever it is he says. Now we aren't given that content in the gospel story, it's how Jesus taught that amazed everybody who heard him. And that's what we're to concentrate on, the how he taught. And notice that Jesus 
engages in particular with the energy that one man has brought into the gathering. At the start of this service, I asked us to share something from our weeks. And that's because today, in the Gospel, we see Jesus operating in the reality of people's lives. And that's where we shall meet Jesus also, in the reality of our living. Now, think about that man whose inner state blurts out into the gathering. It attracts no comment from the congregation, does it? I mean, is this a place of such complete inclusion that nothing is a surprise? Maybe. Not even someone the narrator labels unclean causes surprise. Perhaps nobody notices him because everybody is focused wholly on Jesus. Even the whatever it is that possesses the man with an unclean spirit recognises Jesus for who he is, the Holy One of God. Well, Jesus responds to and rebukes that disruptive force, and I think that that's a pointer to the radical nature of Jesus and helps me understand the story of it. Jesus is involved and involving. Because I think this is my interpretation this week. There might be another one next week. The locals have become so used to the man's norm that they don't bother about his outbursts. Not even when his utterances are signs that he's at war with himself. He's overwhelmed in the thinking of the day, possessed by something that has taken him over. And so perhaps they shrug, you know, it's just how he is. Maybe we do that sometimes with people around us. We go, oh, they're just like that. And we don't trouble ourselves too much further to wonder what is going on for that person. What seems to be different and new here is that Jesus commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. Jesus confronts whatever is forcing this man to experience conflict within himself. For this man, the state of how things are now is not how his life has to stay. The freedom to act, which is the authority of Jesus, is freedom that he can share. Just as last week he said to those fishermen, follow me, and in the instant they did. It's the same deal this week, I think. Wake up from the routine or the self-conflicted. From the life on autopilot, we would now say, to the sense of purpose and full-hearted living that enables us to see the Holy One in our midst, in the very truth of ourselves. The example of Jesus calls us back to ourselves, back to the truth of us. And that's the good news. That's the good news. Let us in this New Year period, just still New Year, let us work to let go of that sense of feeling lost amid all the other news, the TV reports, the social media which is unpleasant, Advertising that's designed to take us over and reshape us as problems in need of a solution that we can buy for $49.99. Two easy payments. Let's let go of the opinions of people who assert that their views are the opinions of any reasonable person even when they're presenting discrimination and hatred in the guise of free speech. We don't have to feel lost. We don't have to be complacent. We don't have to give up. As Dr. King said, let's say it together. History will have to record that the greatest tragedy of this period of social transition 
was not the vitriolic words and the violent actions of the bad people, but the appalling silence and indifference of the good. And he continued. Our generation will have to repent not only for the words and acts of the children of darkness, but also for the fears and apathy of the children of light. And so, friends, amid contemporary social upheavals, we know the temptation to leave things to the politicians or to the system, to let pressures and powers pull us apart, even to the point of dictating how our frustrations show up in public. We get it. Now, I realise there are saints in this room, and you don't ever manifest your frustrations. I know you don't. Others of us do. We get it. And so, friends, can we feel that letting ourselves be dominated or defeated is not the truth of us? As Jesus saw a person to be whole, whatever is constraining us spiritually does not have to define us. Well, we start where we are and we can figure out what the next step will be. An opening to the possibilities of change and confronting the risks of staying put. We might believe that Jesus sees and addresses us also. Our epiphany calling is to put our whole self in and through grace to recognize ourselves as the holy ones of God. And when we come to lighting some candles, that's what I will invite us to do, to see ourselves as the holy ones of God, people of potential, who are developing and growing always. So it is. Amen. God has spoken by his prophets, spoken his unchanging word. Thank you.
of dedication together. We are thankful to make offerings in love. We dedicate money, online donations, food and time freely given, that they be a blessing for all who receive and give. In a few moments, Nan will share a prayer with us and bring us into that prayer with her. But, and then after that, there will be a time to listen to some music. I have a recording, Henry Brown's hymn, Come As You Are, That's How I Want You. And sometimes we sing this, but I thought today we might just listen to the words, watch the words, and people might sing along if they wish. Uh, so straight after the prayer, please go into the space where you would be lighting some candles and... Bring your whole self to whatever it is that God is calling you to today. Thank you. Loving and gracious God, with this honest, we give you our wholehearted thanks. We have so much to be thankful for. We can thank you for your creation, the amazing diversity of plants and animals in our world, how much we admire and wonder at them. Forgive us, Lord. We're not always so accepting of the differences and diversity of our fellow humans. Forgive us when we think of others firstly as different or not like us, when we consider others with fear or antagonism. Help us to remember that we're all made in your image, we're all worthy of your love, and show us your presence in those we encounter. Help us to live together and work together without the prejudice, arrogance and pride that keep us apart from each other and from you. We're thankful that we're able to worship here, in freedom and amongst friends who share a new wonder and celebrate your life and your example to us. And yet, like the man in the synagogue at Capernaum, at times we have our fears and demons we struggle with pressures and distractions that hold us back from being the people that you want and intend us to be. Help us to know your healing love, your authority and your peace. Be close to us and to all who struggle with the many evils in the world. Too many people live in the midst of war and conflict, fear of the unknown, loss of homes and the lives of family and friends. We pray for those who are in positions of power and influence, that they seek wisdom and work towards peace. Be with those who are giving aid and comfort in dark places and who work to overcome evil. As we remember, as Paul wrote, we should not be overcome by evil, but instead overcome evil with good. Read how people brought others to Jesus for healing and we bring to you today those who are sick, at home, in hospital. In quietness, remember those that we know and love who are in need of your healing. We remember too those who are grieving as they think of loved ones no longer with them. And our thoughts and prayers with Jin Suk and her family and with others who mourn. We ask you to surround them with your love. We find it easy now to look for answers, to Google for knowledge and information. But what we need, Lord, more than knowledge, is your wisdom. Wisdom to show us how best to live and serve you and serve others. We become wise by honouring you. Give us your wisdom so that we may apply our knowledge wisely as we make decisions for ourselves and for our church here at Honourable Christian Community. And I'm now using words from the Church of Scotland worship service for today. Teach us how best to use the freedom we've been given to serve you and to make common cause with all who seek the well-being of others. We pray for people in positions of influence, remembering the internet and other forms of mass communication. May we have the wisdom to nurture what is good and guard against what is harmful. We pray for all who advance knowledge and extend the frontiers of science, thanking you for the many benefits we enjoy as a result. God, only wise, may knowledge be used for good alone. May we return often to the wellspring of wisdom, 
that we may share what you have given us to drink with a thirsty world. Receive our prayers, O Lord. Some are for people we love. Some are for people we find hard to love. Some are for people who are happy, others for people in pain. Some are for people we know, others for people known by you. In quiet moments we pray, Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. Thank you, everybody, and thank you for such a beautiful prayer in there. So beautifully attuned to the gospel message today. conversation over morning tea and so go forth accompanied by the Holy Spirit who unravels the ways of the wicked who dissolves the logic of evil and who lures us to our own healing that we might be compassion embodied rushing forth refreshing and free